Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. Today we're going to be retiring my old printing press and moving up to and customizing my new dream press. I've been using a small Riesen baby press for over 10 years now, but it's finally time to move on. After saving every dime of every print sale, commission, and your Patreon support, I'm finally able to get the press I've wanted since I first started printing in college around 2007. And I'm really excited about the possibilities with this press. This is an 18 inch by 36 inch Takash press, which is quite an upgrade from my old small press. And I also went with the upgraded seven and a half inch roller instead of the regular 4.75. And this guy weighs in at 260 pounds. I went for the black powder coat finish, but you can pay them extra for basically whatever color you want. So it got dropped off on a pallet and I convinced the truck drivers to help me move it into my building, but then I was on my own. I ended up taking it off of the pallet and having to move it into my small studio, which I've actually since moved out of, and then I got to the assembly. A shout out to Takash for sending me a bunch of build photos along the way. They built each one by hand in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I had a really great time touring their facility a couple years ago. It came packed really well, and assembly was pretty straightforward. I did have to reinforce my table, and these shelves are supposed to support a thousand pounds, but they do twist or kind of flex a bit. So I added a rigid wood support side and then two by fours under the top panel. So now it's just completely rigid and solid. And here it is all set up and ready to start printing. Before I jump into the handle upgrades, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and be part of this print community. So now we're gonna move on to creating a custom handle. The one that comes stock works fine, but it's pretty long and I don't need more than one hand to crank over the press. And I end up just running into it all day anyways. I designed all of the mold components in Fusion 360 and then went ahead and 3D printed them out. This shape here is what I want the outside of the final resin handle to look like. But I want another object on the inside of it, kind of like those bowling balls with a skull in the middle. So the first step is gonna create a silicone mold of this outer shape. I also created a 3D printed mother mold that shapes the outside of the silicone and they'll support it in the future when I pour in the resin and we'll get to that later. And I also included little nubs which kind of stick up and they'll become holes in the silicone that'll act as pour spouts in the future. For this step, I'm using smooth on silicone rubber for the mold it's really flexible and it'll make a really resilient piece. I didn't record the actual pouring, but as you can see, I had a bit of leakage and I plugged it with clay. I also have some excess that I used to create another mold for a different project. I want to be able to reuse this mold if I want to make more handles or if this one fails. So I tried to clean up the silicone and make it in the best shape possible. And so when I peel back the silicone off of that handle mold, you can see the small plug on the bottom. This is going to center and hold the inside piece of my handle. And here's that piece fresh off the printer. Rather than carefully painting it, which I tried first, I just sprayed it all black, and then I went and I could scrape away the parts that I want to be white.
Now we can move on to the final casting where all the steps come together. I'm using Vaseline to keep the resin from sticking to the plastic and basically gluing it all together, as well as using clay to keep resin out of the places that I don't want it to go. Finally, I can pop my handle core into the mold and press it firmly onto the centering pin on the bottom. A little clay works great as a pour spout. I'm using epoxy cast 690, which is a really slow curing epoxy and really thin. This is gonna help the bubbles escape before they harden, since I don't have all the equipment to degas or to pressure pot cure it. I really took my time and tried to get into all the nooks and crannies with the resin and let the bubbles really work themselves out. Again, here you can see things kind of went off the rails. It found every spot it could to escape. I let it cure for a few more days and then the mixing bucket is always a good indicator of your cured product. Obviously a little bit of sanding is gonna be needed and a little patch up where bubbles formed at my pore spouts. Thankfully, resin's really easy to patch. So after a good while of wet sanding, here's that final handle that we can go ahead and put on the press. I used a smaller diameter bolt and a couple of bushings to protect the plastic core. I really didn't want to permanently modify this brand new printing press, so I used a threaded insert that goes into the original larger hole and provides a smaller threaded inside. Then it was just a matter of getting the amount of play just right and I could lock the bolt in place with a nut from the back. Here's the original handle and the new diode press handle. I've been using it for a while now, and it's working out absolutely great. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching! To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page, where I post behind the scenes photos as well as other patron rewards.
Thanks. 